Welcome back, everybody. Jason's here. This is another video tutorial about Yaystar P-Series PBX basic level configuration. Previously, we've talked about how to realize both internal communication and external communication for extension users. However, that was only the first step. Our customers will have more diversified requirements for their phone system. For example, using IVR, Ring Group, or a queue to handle incoming costs. Let's see how we can make it happen. IVR is short for Interactive Voice Response, also known as Auto Attendant. It's one of the most popular features for receiving incoming calls. Once enabled, callers will hear voice prompt played by the system indicating them to dial specific key for the corresponding service or move to the next level. As we've mentioned, each IVR needs to have voice prompts to guide the callers. So first thing first, let's prepare the voice prompts in PBX settings. Voice prompt. Go directly to the custom prompt. Here we have two methods to get a voice prompt. We can click record new, name the file. Then choose an extension user to be the speaker. Once clicking record, the PBX will call the speaker so that he or she can pick up the phone and speak. And the system will record it or we can upload a prompt to the PBX directly. We can click on Upload to check about the file requirements. Once the prompts are recorded or uploaded successfully, we can see them in the custom prompt list. Now let's create a new IVR by going to Call Feature, IVR, and click on Add. The IVR number and name are generated automatically. We can change them if we want. Please note that the number needs to be within a certain range as we configured in extension preferences. After that, we'll need to choose the prompt to play when a caller gets into this IVR. Click on the arrow. Choose our prompt from the drop-down list. Of course, we can add multiple prompts to one IVR by selecting them all together. Here we also have some default time limitation for this IVR. Prompt repeat count defines the times of the prompt will be played if no reaction is received from the caller. Response timeout is the maximum number of seconds to wait for the caller to react. Digit timeout is the time limit between each dial digit. We can change the default value if needed. Then we have a few options. Dial extensions means it is allowed for callers to directly dial to reach an extension user instead of following the IVR. Dial outbound routes, callers could dial through outbound route directly. We also have dial to check voicemail, which will allow the caller to dial asterisk 2 to check voicemail. Anyway, it's just optional. After the limitation and prompt setups, we can click on the key press event to set up all the keys we can find on our phone dial pad to the corresponding destinations. The system will send the callers accordingly. We also have timeout and valid option. Timeout option could help us to define the system where shall we drop the call if the caller fails to dial any key. Invalid defines the destination to send callers if any invalid key has been dialed. And we can set custom prompt for this. Now, let's move to the ring group. It's a feature to share the distribution of incoming cost amount employees. For example, we can have sales department in one ring group. Now let's click on add. Name this ring group. Then we will need to choose members. Pick the extension users from the sales department. Next, select the ring strategy. We got two options. Ring all means if a call was sent to this group, all extensions will ring simultaneously. And ring sequentially refers that extensions will ring one by one according to the order in which we put the selected list. Of course, we can change the order by clicking the arrows aside. We also have ring timeout. It defines the seconds when one extension will ring before moving to the next extension in sequential mode. Ring group is a pretty simple method to have a group of your extensions to handle incoming costs. However, if we constantly have massive incoming costs, we might need more advanced approach feature. That will be the queue. Click on Add to create a queue. Basically, call queue is a method of handling large costs and provides callers with engaging holding experiences. Let's start it by selecting a ring strategy. 
Here we have way more options than ring group. Except for ring all, we get a lot of other options. Least recent makes the least ran extension will get calls first. Fill with the calls makes the extension which has finished fewer calls than other members will be ranged firstly. If we choose random, the system will just ring a random extension. In round robin memory hunt mode, it will memorize the current agent, then assign the next phone call to the next available extension. Now, of course, we have linear. That means the first one in the list will always get ranged the first. We can choose the MOH playlist for this queue in music on hold. We also have follower destination to drop the callers if they have been waiting exceed the maximum waiting time. Now let's check for agent options. Agent timeout is the duration for each agent's phone ring. After the timeout time, the system will move to the next agent according to the ring strategy. Ring try interval defines the duration to wait before trying all agents again. Then we have wrap up time. That would be the spare time after the agents finish up a call. Agent announcement is the prompt played for each agent before it calls or breach to them. Ring use option will enable the queue to send calls to an agent whose line is occupied. These are all settings for agents. And we can go to members to choose static agents and dynamic agents. Static agents are always members of the queue and cannot log out. Dynamic agents are the agents can log in or log out of the queue at any time. We also have some preferences for callers to improve their experience. The maximum callers in queue by default is zero, which means no limit. We can change it according to the real cases. Then we can just enable leave when empty, which will force on hold callers out of the queue if no agents are working. Join empty will allow callers to wait in the queue when there are no agents. We could also send join announcement here. This will be the prompt to play to the caller once prior to joining the queue. What's more, the system will keep the callers updated with their position in the queue and estimate the holding time by the frequency that we've decided. Besides, we can select other announcements to be played periodically for unhold callers and, of course, the frequency. Then, at last, we can assign an event key just for the callers who get tired of waiting, leaving a group voicemail for the queue members. Seems nice. Here we still have something left in queue configuration, including queue manager, SOA setting, and queue panel permissions. Those are actually parts of our call center solution. We'll talk about it in the future videos. Guess that was all we have for this video. Please watch part 2 if you're interested in knowing more call features. Thank you so much for watching. I will catch you guys in the next one.